All right, I have this uh, detail, this sculpted detail that goes at the base of these windows. So the next uh, few minutes I'm going to work on creating this detail. Now, all I'm going to be doing is using this to create a normal map because I'm not going to have actual geometry in the model. You'd just be adding too many polygons. But I'm going to initially make this as a 3D model, then project it onto a flat plane to create the normal map. I'm just using a one-sided uh, element here, and I'm going to angle it and position it within the square. Then using my bend tool, I'm going to introduce the curve into that to try and replicate the detail that I showed you previously beneath that window. And as I've indicated before, I have a photograph of what I'm trying to create on my right screen, which you can't see, that I'm using as a guide to create this. When I make these videos, I like to show you, while it may be boring, I like to show you the process, show you my mistakes, show you that it takes, that doing this type of work is, is a process. It's you, if you make it look the way you want it to look the first time out of the box, it's just luck. You just have to keep working with it and refining what you're doing until you get it to look the way you want. There I'm angling it more because I realize that I'm not getting as, as much curvature on those ends as I need. Therefore I need to flatten it a little bit so that I can introduce more curvature. And I want that, the ridge of that piece I'm adjusting to bisect the ridges of the those border elements. Then I mirror it And what I'm creating here is just one half of the, that entire detail. Now what I'm trying to do here is there, each one of these has kind of a spike, I guess you'd call it, that projects out. And so what I'm doing here is adding some uh, loops to this or lines, edges to create a boundary area, if you will, so that I can draw just using my scale tool and I have this on subdivision surfaces so that I get a smooth uh, mesh and then I'm going to draw those out with the scale tool to create that spike. Now what you saw just then was as I selected those and turned on my scale tool but I could see from the handles that the scale tool was out of plane. So what I'm doing, what I just did was I selected two vertices on either side and then set a work plane to those so that when I scale now I will be in the proper plane so that I draw it out flat. And now what I'm doing is just moving these vertices again, looking at the image on my right screen. I'm just working to try and get that those spikes to look similar to the original. And each one of those spikes has kind of a curvature on it. They're not straight. <clears throat> my tool, bend tool, got out of plane there for some 
odd reason. And again, the only reason I'm getting this kind of smoothness in, in my mesh is because I've got subdivision surfaces turned on. Now subdivision surfaces, when you uh, make a mesh like that, if you were to, you don't see the number of polygons here, but if I were to freeze that mesh, you would have a ton of polygons. But in this case, I don't care because I'm, all I'm doing is use there. I, you can see I turned off subdivision services. See how spiky it is? I don't care how many polygons this has because all I'm going to do is use it to create a normal map. So there, what I'm doing is slicing that piece in two so that I can reuse the exact same mesh that I just made. and just get lined up as close as I can to the original and then I'll merge my vertices. Merging vertices can be a little tricky. Sometimes you merge more than what you want. duplicated that piece and then rotated it 90 degrees. Okay, I need to made up these railings here, working on this wall area here, and I need to make up a door for here and here. Now, I'm going to do this these doors with just normal maps, but I'm going to use a door model to generate those normal maps. And I have these doors that I made for another model that I was working on a long time ago. So I'm going to utilize these Now I want to resize this and make this thinner because we have a, at the top of this door is a, uh, boy I forget what they call that, at the top of doors when you have a, a window that opens at the top. That gone it. I know what it's called, I just can't remember. But 
but instead of just resizing that, if I were just to take my, if I were to select the whole thing and use my scale tool, I'm going to be distorting this detail here. So I just want to grab the vertices on top, and I'm reducing that because the photograph of the real door is much thinner, like that. And a lot of times, um, doing it with a model like this and then projecting your normals out of it is a lot easier than trying to paint the thing up in Photoshop or what have you. It's just a good, easy way to do it. <clears throat> and when you're working with something like this, you want to have that mesh as a separate mesh so that it's when you're selecting stuff, you're not interfering with the rest of your model. So I think that'll look, look and work okay. Man, that was a tall door opening. All right, now we can make the same thing. Control copy, control paste. Pull that up here. these out here where I can see what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm getting this weird shadowing on these things. You can get these weird maps. Notice now that weird shadowing is gone. You'll get these odd, and a lot of times it's a, for some reason there was a vertex map on those. I imported those as OBJs, and um, yeah. 3D programs do weird things sometimes. Like if you have a, this surface right here, and like if you had, let's say you had a raised surface, and let's say that was on another flat surface. A bump map will show different um, that grayscale values to show one area is raised above the other, but a normal map won't do that this surface even though it's might be on a different plane than another flat surface adjacent to it normal map will see it the same you'll have the exact same coloration so the only way to really induce the normal map effect is you got to give it just a little bit of a angle on that face that's at the side. So I'm going to pull that in 
just to give myself a little bit of an angle right there. do that a little bit more. Pull that in just a little bit. So you see I might have gone a little bit far with that but I guess it'll be alright. So see here this top edge on this panel relief is parallel or perpendicular to this front face. The normal map's gonna you're not gonna see that difference so you need to give it a little bit of a edge right there. I might have gone a little far with that but I think we'll be okay. Instead of doing this twice I'm just gonna delete that and recopy that over there once I'm done with it. Now, you see how you're getting this little bit of a odd shading around this thing? That is probably caused because this thing needs some loops. And my guess is, is that might affect uh, your normal map. So I'm going to add a couple edge loops in here to clean that up. All right, I'll hit B for bevel. In Moto, when you use your bevel tool, the blue handle will create a raised surface and the red handle will just generate lines around it like that. And you can see we still got this funny, see this now flattened out. I put that edge loop in there. Right here. And it flattened out. So now this is a nice flat surface. But you see here you've got this gradation on that panel. And pull in a little bit of bevel and I bet that will fix it. Yeah, that fixed it. So that should help provide some better definition there and might provide us with a better normal map. I'm going to try and put a bevel on this. I'm not sure how successful I'll be because I've the mesh is kind of messed up. What I'm doing here is I, I need a little bevel on this inside edge because the doors come together. Even if I left a gap between those two doors, be the, the seam, the opening between the two doors, even if I left a gap there, the normal map would not pick that up. So I need to put a little bevel on this thing beveled edge there, I want to mirror this instead of copying and pasting that over. Let's see, we're in the z-axis, z-axis, let's mirror that thing. Alright, so there's my mesh, my high-res mesh, tall door HR. I'm going to make a new mesh by hitting in, then I'm going to use my cube tool just to draw out. And if you use a cube tool and don't add any depth to it, then it's basically just giving you a I don't need those lines in there, but they're not hurting anything either. So you got to UV that piece. And I'm just going to project from view. 
So there you can see that. When you do use project from view, it place it does that in a proper aspect ratio. Now I'm going to move that to where I am just right there. No, I didn't size that properly. Okay, I need to reproject that because since I changed the size of it, it's going to be distorted. So there you go. If you don't get that to the right size, the projection the right size, if the projection, if the aspect ratio of the projection in UV space is different than the aspect ratio of the item, it'll distort your texture. Call that tall door low res. You always want to save your work before you do a render or something like that. Every once in a while program will crash. It rarely happens but it's an absolute pain in the ass to spend a half hour working on something and then have your program crash and losing all that work. So let's go to game, baking wizard. Go ahead and do that a two K is probably good enough for that. Tall door high res is going to be my source, and low res will be target. Normal map, bake. Looks like we've got good definition there. One thing you can do in Photoshop or with uh, normal maps, if you want to strengthen, you can paint on normal maps just like you paint on any other texture. If you want to strengthen a normal map, duplicate the layer and make it an overlay, and, and it will see how that strengthens that. Just makes it more dramatic. And what a normal map is doing is it's just using these, the computer reads these colors and basically is telling the computer, as I understand it, the, it's called a normal map because a normal is a mathematical term for a ray or a perpendicular coming off of a surface. So anything that is perpendicular to a surface, and in the case of 3D stuff, that would be a, like the surface of a, a polygon, a vector coming out perpendicular to that surface is what is called a normal. Like I said, it's a, it's a mathematical term, I guess. <clears throat> so these colors are when it renders out is telling the computer at what angle that normal or that vector should come off of that surface what direction i guess you look at is telling it what direction the light's coming from so there's our normal map for that door need to clean up a couple places here on this normal map. I was just looking at it here. Now, we don't have our door edge, but I'm not concerned about that because that's going to be hidden inside the door frame anyway. So you're not going to see that. 
but you can see we've got some artifacts here that we shouldn't have so I want to get rid of those just going to make a new layer grab my eyedropper tool select that color Select my, I've got my color, you hit uh, marquee where you want it and hit alt backspace and it'll fill that. And here you can see what I was talking about, that you need to put an angle on a receding perpendicular surface. If you have a plane here and then a perpendicular plane that's receding back away from it, if you don't give it a little bit of an angled edge, the normal map will just see those two, you won't see that side surface and you, it won't you won't have the appearance of a raised surface there. Again, as I said before, either a bump map or a displacement map will use grayscale values to indicate the relative elevation of different surfaces. It's not the way a normal map works. Alright, so we've got that cleaned up then. Okay, next we're going to make these corbels or brackets that support the balcony. And I'm going to run through the entire process here of making this just to demonstrate the techniques that I use to make such an item. Just deleting those unnecessary edges inside. When creating pieces like this, it's just trial and error. You just keep working with it until you get it the way to look the way you want. And again, I've got the photographs of that. Uh, Corbel on my right screen, so I have it for reference to see what it looks like. What I'm doing here is inserting a cylinder to create the inside curvature that occurs in. this item and I'll use a cylinder just to create a nice curve in there then I'll delete everything but just the surface that I need and then flip those normals back around so that they're facing the right way And there I'm just setting a work plane and making all of those vertices jump to the same plane as the sides of that.
horrible. Then I come in and delete the items I don't want. then position that so that it's my vertices will line up all right and then moving these edges so that they are at the same point as the vert and then weld those vertices Add an edge in there to grab those verts. Vertices like that against a polygon, they have to be resolved to a final edge or resolved with a diagonal to a, another vertices. You generally don't want to leave a freestanding uh, vertices in the middle of a edge on a polygon. Now, if you had Ten different modelers and assign them to make this object I pretty much guarantee you there would be ten different approaches as to how this thing was made. There's not really a right or wrong way to do it. Uh, you just kind of figure it out as you go as to okay what do I need to do to make that thing. An important part of being able to sculpt and create items is to, you, you have to learn to see, I guess is a good way of putting it. Um, you really have to kind of train yourself to really actually see what's there. Now here I'm inducing the, using the bevel tool to create this decorative cap, I guess you'd call it. I'm sure there's an architectural term for that. I can't think of what it is offhand. And here I'm just figuring out what I want to do with that surface. I'm trying to make a a good looking piece but I don't want to introduce too many polygons into this because this will remain as it is. I'm not going to be using normal maps uh, to create this item although I'll probably use normal maps to put some details on the side that exist in real life. Maybe, maybe not. But this piece will stand on its own. So I'll go in and get rid of as many edges as I can that I don't really have to have. And I'm just kind of trying to watch it to delete edges. I'll delete the edges that I think will have the least impact on the shape. And if I delete one and it has a greater impact on that shape than what I I'm willing to put up with then I'll just undo the delete on it
the models that we make for use in city skylines are really kind of crude. Um, and, you know, one could complain about that, but when you consider the number of assets that are used in the game and the tremendous area that the game covers and all of the various assets that have to be loaded and rendered, you know, it adds up, so it's understandable. Now, what I've done here is, is I decided I did not like the looks of that first curvature that I put in there. It was kind of blah, didn't have much uh, pizzazz to it. It just, I didn't think looked very good. So I've created another, repeated the process, created another cylinder, gave it uh, more uh, division so that it was a smoother curve and I'm going to move it further back in that bracket, the body of that bracket or corbel uh, to give a more dramatic curvature to that inside face. Making anything like this and getting good results is really just a matter of being uh, unsatisfied with your work. It takes a certain degree of patience, I guess. But it's just a matter of being picky and being unsatisfied with your work until you get it to look the way you think it should look. It's not hard. It just... I guess requires a little bit of stubbornness. I am running this, uh, the video itself here is running at three, three, three X speed. So this is three times as fast as what I was actually modeling it at. This section of this uh, making this item looks like looking at my time span here looks like it's about what are we running from about 27 minutes until 51 minutes I think so that's about what roughly a 25 minute span times three is about what 75 minutes so a little over it took me a little over an hour to make this in real time including redos I'm showing here all the actual work in creating this including my mistakes. And now what I'm working on is just trying to get the sides of that item buttoned up. And here I decided it'd be a lot easier with all of those edges that I have coming back off of that curved face. It'd be easier just to 
grab all of those and just drag all of those back to the and just like leave those as freestanding vertices on the back edge of that piece and it'll work just fine. You do in fact actually if you do anything else with it you're just going to be introducing additional polygons. And I've set a work plane at the back face of that corbel and then I'm just going to set those to that position. So you can see that curvature looks a whole lot better than that first one that we put in. And I hear I need to introduce a bit of a S curve into this lower piece. And it's always a good idea when you're building something like this, if you have it out in the wide open where you can have room to work, uh, it can be kind of hard to get a feeling for your proportions uh, when it's just sitting out in, in free space like that. So it's always a good idea to return that item if, if it's sitting adjacent uh, to other uh, elements of the building to return it to its proper location so that you can get a feeling for how you're doing with your proportions. Now this entire Shadow Castle project, it has a lot of vertices, but not as many as you might think. Uh, I forget what the total count is. Uh, I think that, well, we're well below the max. I'll just put it that way. I'll tell you what the vertices is when I can look at them. I just don't know what they are right at the moment. But it's a hero piece. There's only going to be one of them on the map. It's going to have a LOD. Uh, I'm not looking forward to making the LOD for this. I think that's going to be a pain. Um, but it's only going to be displaying the full uh, resolution of the model when you're within the prescribed visual distance so when you back away from it it's going to switch to the LOD version so the computer's not being forced to deal with it when you're at a distance from it. Now the end caps on these corbels on the real item are a bit fancier than this. I'm just trying to simplify this a bit. I'm not sure what happened there, how that square got knocked over to that one side. I must have just been careless. So I'm just kind of uh, freelancing this right here just to put in something that's simple, doesn't have too many polygons in it, and uh, we'll just finish off the base of that in what a, looks reasonable. I 
I'm not trying to put in every little finite detail in modeling this castle. I'm just I'm trying to put enough detail into it that it sells it. Now one thing I'd like for you to pay attention to on this is you see how that bevel is messed up right there? That's occurring because that one edge that goes back away from that is at too sharp of an angle. When you're doing bevels, it doesn't like they don't like triangles and they don't like edges that uh, recede away from the bevel edge at too acute of an angle. I would have uh, done better if I had either run that uh, edge straight up. Probably would have been a better deal there. Just run a quick render on it to see if the mesh is looking halfway decent. need to put a bevel on those. Now bevels add a lot of polygons and there is a way to smooth those, to have a hard edge and smooth them with normal maps. Um, it's a specific procedure that you go through. You have to set up edge smoothing and I'm too lazy to spend the time doing all of that. Plus I'd have to relearn how to do it. I learned how to do it once and I forget. <clears throat> this piece doesn't have that many polygons in it so I'm just going to let the mesh carry that. Here I'm beveling in the sides on these corbels have an inset and then a sculpted detail inside within that inset. So I'm just creating the bevel and then... Now here I tried using the... You see in the lower left hand corner my profile palette. I tried introducing a bit of a profile to that but it didn't work too well for this shape so I'm just going to drag it in and let it go at that. When you're making models like this, your your mindset and your mental approach to it is every bit as important as uh, any skill <clears throat> skill level. Or, I mean, of course, it takes a certain amount of skill level, and that just comes with working with this stuff a lot. Being able to get relatively proficient at making 3D models, it just takes time, like anything else. Uh, working with uh, 3D, um, it's an entire science and art unto itself. It's really a big field. Uh, the gaming industry has become as big, if not bigger, than Hollywood movies now, is my understanding. Now, on that lower section there a moment ago where I put this, that end set on the side of it, I didn't like the way it looked, so I got rid of it. I thought it was too much. I thought it was beginning to look kind of cluttered. So here I'm just going to vary. It's a small piece. I'm just going to very quick. I isolate it to its, make sure it's on its own mesh. I'm going to run pack on that. I'm not going to worry about trying to consolidate that. There's a lot of dead space in there, but that, the final size of that, 
UV island is going to be really small. So I'm just going to merge that back with the mesh, the envelope mesh of that front room. And then I'll just size that and cram it in some place where I've got some empty space. Just like that. We'll be good to go. You always want to be sure and UV a piece like that because there's going to be multiple duplicates of that. And you always want to remember to be sure and UV that before you start making copies of it and moving it around. Because if every copy, if you don't UV it first, every copy is going to have a separate set of UVs. So you don't want that. Here I'm going to show a different technique for generating normal maps uh, in creating this arched window that goes on the side of the building. It's basically made up in Photoshop uh, just with a series of ellipses and lines. Then I convert them to grayscale, just adjust their contrast and exposure. Then I apply a effects inner glow to give that some depth. Apply that to all the elements. That way when you make a normal map out of it, it will give it the appearance of having some three-dimensional contour or depth to it. And then I adjust the exposure. darken the background to provide more separation between the raised areas and the flat areas. And when I'm finished adjusting all of the grayscale values to get to where I need it to be, then I export it out as a PNG and bring it into ZBrush to pull up the profile. Create a flat plane in ZBrush. Bump up the geometry to about a million polygons. Bring in that alpha that I just created in Photoshop, use it to mask the plane, then using deformation offset just on the z-axis, pull that up, then put a normal uh, matte cap, normal map matte cap on that to generate the normal map. Then grab that document and then export. <clears throat> I bring that back into Photoshop. Isolate the areas that are flat areas inside the window frames and then on a separate layer fill that with black that will become the glass in the game then I find a spot in my UV map to cram that thing in because I didn't account for that window when I initially laid out my UVs I wasn't planning on putting that window in but it's in the real building so I decided I should put it in and then here I'm just resizing that. So the normal map will go in the normal map layer. The black will go in what I, I've created a glass layer. And then I will also just put a solid color in the color layer on in that same UV space.
wrap this video up. Uh, I know it's a long video, but had a lot of ground to cover. So here are the additional elements. This is just that front room. It uh, doesn't show the rest of the building. But here you can see how all this is turning out so far. Still have some more dirt splash up and shadowing to do on those stone base collars around the building. A little more detail work to do on it. And here you can see the window that we just created. Still have more detailing to do on that chimney surface. All right, well, we'll wrap this video up. And thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.